everybody. So this is week three, day one, and we have uh, Lane and Kat joining us for the workout, at least probably for the first little bit. Um, so if you've made it this far, good for you. Congratulations. By the time you're done this week, you will be 25% through the 12-week challenge. Awesome. Are you getting one workout, two workouts, or three workouts in a week? It doesn't matter. As long as you're doing one, that's fine. And like the post I put up last week, if you're not even able to do all of, the, of, of one workout, that's fine. Just pick one exercise, do one set of one exercise, do something, okay? All right, so this week what we're gonna do is in our two workouts, we're gonna change some of the exercises a little bit, make them a little harder. Hello, Amy. And we're gonna add in one extra exercise. So now we're up to five exercises total. We're not gonna go beyond five in any of the workouts in the weeks to come. We did three the first week, four last week, and we're doing five this week. We're just going to start making the exercises and the combinations from here on in a little bit harder to challenge you more. I'm in bare feet. Yes, I actually prefer to work out in bare feet, especially doing exercises like squatting, that sort of thing. Do what you're comfortable with, but I really do think that um, we were born with feet uh, for a reason, that we, we can use them, and that um, squatting and that sort of thing with uh, shoes that are, are elevated arches, that sort of thing. I don't know that it necessarily adds a benefit to us at all. And I know that when powerlifters train uh, for a powerlifting competition, when they lift in a powerlifting competition, when they deadlift, they always choose flat soled shoes. So I like to work out in bare feet. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate <clears throat> the five exercises, the main ones that we're going to do, and then I'm going to show you the variations, okay? We were doing a squat before, Okay, and remember I was saying just do half squats if you can't do full squats. If doing a full squat bothers your knees, okay, that's what we did the first week. And then the second week we added a twist, okay, where you come up, you twist. Twist. Now we're going to add a third motion, okay, we're going to do hip flexion at the top, okay. So this is going to challenge your balance. So you're going to have to be in reasonably decent shape and have good balance in order to do this. So I'm going to say have a bit of a narrower stance because the wider your stance, the less balanced you are when you do the hip flexion portion. Here's what it looks like, okay? So we're gonna squat, come up and twist, and as you twist, you're gonna raise your knee. Squat, twist, squat, twist, with the knee coming up, right? Okay, so go slow at first. This is mobility stuff. I'm trying to work all your joints in and across different ranges of motion. So this is hip flexion, and as you're coming down and up, you're doing hip extension, okay? But you're also doing knee flexion and knee extension. So we're trying to get a whole bunch of things going at once and focusing on turning the body. Of course, we need that range of motion. It starts to decrease um, as we get older. So uh, I wanna work all of those. So we got squat, <coughs> twist, and hip flexion. Twist hip flexion, twist hip flexion, okay, great. Now if you can't do that, just do the squat and twist. If you can't go down all the way, go down halfway. And again, the variations that you can do for the legs, if that's not working for you, you can do hip thruster, squeeze your butt cheeks together at the top, stay on your heels, okay? You can do as I showed you last week, and the week before, donkey kicks, either with the knee bent or straight, if that bothers your knee. And we can do hip flexion, abduction, donkey kick, which is uh, extension, flexion, abduction, extension. I'll keep my legs straight on this one now, okay? Or you can do circles, going in opposite directions. Now. Try as much as possible when you're doing any of these exercises against the wall to not hold on. Maybe just have your fingertips here. Challenge your balance. To stay balanced, keep this knee bent a little bit. Pick a spot somewhere. I'm looking at my elliptical trainer here. And I'm keeping my eye on that spot. You'll find you'll balance better that way, okay? So those are some options for you if the squats or the squat with twist or the squat with twist and hip flexion don't work, okay? So that's for the lower body. Now for the push exercises. We're going to introduce, I'm going to assume that you probably have bottles of water or you might have light dumbbells. Okay, so we're going to introduce a little bit of variety using those. I'll go over the main ones 
that I showed you the previous two weeks. There's push-ups on your knees. You can do them on your toes as well, right? If those are too hard, you can bend your body to 90 degrees like this. You just do a push-up like that, not a problem. Remember to keep your arms just outside your chest like this. You can also do a push-up, as I showed you last week, across a stability ball, like so. Or across an ottoman or a chair, the further out you go, the harder the push-up is. Okay? When you come back like this, it gets easier. Alright? So that's what we did last week. And I think I also showed you last week doing a chest press with cans of food, bottles of water, or uh, dumbbells, okay, like so. So we're going to add something called a skull crusher in, okay? So you're going to do a chest press, turn your hands sideways, drop the weights down to your forehead. See, that's the skull crusher part, right? You're crushing your skull, but don't hit yourself. Don't do that, okay? Extend up, press. Skull crusher. Press. Skull crusher. By the way, if you can do these exercises laying over an ottoman or a ball, they'll give you a greater range of motion. The ground won't stop your, uh, your elbows, okay? So, that's a good alternative. Chest press and skull crusher, okay? To doing the push-ups in any one of the different ways that I showed you. Of course, you can use a resistance band, as I showed you last week. To do the uh, the chest press here I've got right here here right if you've got a resistance band feel free to use it okay and the lovely TRX for those of you who are blessed with a suspension trainer if you don't have one of these and, and you're getting serious about working out I'm really gonna suggest that you use them okay again your hands come down. Now I'm in push-up position. My hands are just outside my shoulders. I push up and I bring them together. Just outside my shoulders, push up and bring them together. Biggest mistake I see people making is they come out too wide like this and their arms are pointed out that way. You always want your arms pointed forward. Okay, so those are your push exercises for day one. Your pull exercises. Same thing as last week, but I'm going to give you a bit of a variation. I'm going to combine two that I showed you last week. Again, using bottles of water, cans of food, doing the bent row, okay? Again, nice tight core, straight back, pulling my shoulder blades to the ceiling. I can do this with or without weights. I don't have to do that with weights, right? Might be too much. But I wanna do a row and a reverse fly together. Here we go. Row, fly, row, fly, row, fly, okay? And of course, do this without weights like I just said. Feel free to sit on a chair and do it without weights or with weights, whatever works. This is good for people who have back issues. If you're standing too long, your back bothers you. This is a great alternative, okay? And you can also do it with a band like this, sitting down or standing up. Okay, so I can row, fly, row, fly, and for those of you, again, with the suspension trainer, same thing, okay? You can row, fly, row, fly, okay? The fly part, again, like I said last week, I want you to really focus on squeezing those shoulder blades on both of them, the row and the, the fly. You should really focus on squeezing the shoulder blades, but especially on the fly, okay? Now, the dreaded... Plank. Remember, these exercises, you don't have to do them for a full minute. You can do it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, but if you can, try to do it for a minute, okay? If I'm doing a plank, I want to show you properly how to do a plank, okay? Posture is really important. I want you to imagine that you have a, this is a dowel rod, but let's say a broomstick, okay? Let's say the ground is in front of me here. My toes are on the ground, okay? My elbows are on the ground, I'm in plank position. What you see is my head, my shoulder blades, and my tailbone are touching this bar. That is the proper position. If you can, if you have a mirror that you can put beside you or you have one on the wall where you can watch yourself plank, make sure that your back isn't 
arching too much, okay? Now, many different ways you can do a plank, okay? You can do it on your knees, okay? You can do it on your toes. This is the hardest one, okay? Again, what I want to do here is I want to imagine that I'm pulling my elbows down and crunching, okay? Don't let that back sag, but try and round your back. You won't round it. Um, it's just too hard to do when you're planking, but you'll get your back flatter, okay? You really want to focus on that flat back. So, hardest is elbows to toes. A bit easier is on the knees. Easier than that would be, and I'm going to use a stability ball as an example, but you could use uh, a chair or a couch, the arm of a couch, okay? Planking like this. And then easiest of all, be against the wall, like so, just a wall plank. And you can control how hard it is, how far you step out, the further I step out, the harder it is, the closer I'm into the wall, the easier it is. But I'm doing the same thing, I wanna make sure that my back is straight, and that if I had that imaginary rod on my back, it would touch my head, shoulder blades, tailbone, okay? That's four exercises. And the fifth exercise is going to be what's called a bird dog. Okay, this one is great for the core, and it's good to challenge your stability. So I'm going to show it to you fast first, and then we're going to do it slow, okay? So if your wrists bother you, by the way, on any of these push-ups, okay? Put your, or push-ups, or, or just putting your hands on the ground, put your knuckles on the ground, okay? Have a nice straight wrist. If that's too much, you can actually grab on to a dumbbell in each hand, while you're doing the push-ups, and that forces your wrist to stay straight. I did a video last week for another group I'm part of on how to uh, um, eliminate wrist pain when you're doing push-ups, okay? And you may want to do that here when you're on all fours on your knees and your hands like this. Okay, so what does a bird dog look like? Well, the leg goes out nice and straight, and my arm goes out straight. Now what I'm doing is I'm making a tight fist, okay? And I hold it for a second, and then change. Now, the mistake people make is they try and go up really fast and then they topple. Go slow at first, do this in stages. First the leg, wait till you're balanced, then the arm, wait till you're balanced, hold it for a second, and then switch. Leg, arm, switch. Facing the camera, what I want you to try not to do is to shift to the side when you do it. Okay, see how I'm shifting to the side? That's called reptilian motion. You want to stay straight. This is where your core really works. Okay, now my core is working to keep me from shifting to the side. Okay, if this is too much, just do the leg. Okay, this might be too challenging. Just do the legs, not a problem. Okay, or just the arms. Or you can alternate. You can do an arm, arm, leg, leg. If you find you can't do an actual bird dog without shifting side to side, I'd prefer you do just arm, arm, leg, leg, focusing on not shifting side to side until you've strengthened your core enough that you don't have to shift from side to side, okay? So those are your exercises. You got five of them. We're gonna do them 30 seconds to one minute. We're gonna rest in between two minutes. And we're doing three sets total. So, here we go. Stopwatch, timer, one minute. Okay, you feeling good? You ready to go? I'll give you just a second just to get everything, all your thoughts collected, shake it off. You've tried the exercises. Remember, try and stick to the rest periods. Try to stick to staying in the routine. If you can avoid stopping um, or if you can't avoid uh, going any longer than two minutes in between sets, great. But if you find that you haven't got your breath back and you just don't feel like you're ready to start up again, don't. Wait until you feel like you're ready to start up again, okay? Don't push yourself too much, but push yourself a little bit. Try and stay to the rest periods that we're going to do here, okay? But at any time, you can stop the video, get your breath caught up, and then come back, okay? So here we go. Ready? All right, so we're going to squat. Twist, squat, twist, squat, twist, squat, twist. Maybe just half squats and a twist, not a problem. Half squat, twist, or just squats, right? Or squat, twist, whatever works, whatever you can do, okay? 
You can do the hip thruster, put your head back, maybe on the side of a couch, right, or an ottoman so you can rest your head. That way you don't hurt your neck muscles, really squeeze your butt at the top, okay? Squeeze down, squeeze, all right? So we got 15 seconds to go. Some of you may have chosen instead to do the donkey kicks, alternating legs, not a problem, or these, or the leg circles, right? Okay, good, any one of those are great. Do what you can, okay? That's exercise number one. And we're gonna go right to number two. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that you've all tried the push-ups, et cetera, before. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the chest press skull crusher exercise. Okay, here we go. Chest press, skull crusher, press, skull crusher, press, skull crusher. And remember to turn your hands facing each other on the skull crusher part, but facing your feet when you're doing the chest press. So facing my feet, facing each other. Facing my feet, facing each other. And breathe just naturally, okay? Don't worry about a rhythm of breathing. Just do what works for you. And then I'm fine, even if you have light weights, after 30, 45 seconds a minute, it can get pretty challenging, okay? All right. Some of you might have elbow issues, tendinitis, like uh, tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. Just do the chest press if that's the case. Okay, and remember, try and do it on a stability ball or an ottoman, something that allows you greater range of motion. Okay, there we go. Now we're into the pull exercise. Oop, lost my wallet. Why am I working out with my wallet? Okay, so this one, we're going to focus on the row and the fly. Row, fly. Row, fly. Remember, you can do this sitting down. Don't even have to have weights in your hands, okay? And the one that I didn't show you in the demonstration, but I've shown you before, is assuming I'm sitting in a chair, you can just do this with or without a band, for example, okay? So squeeze your shoulder blades. But let's go back to the row. Fly, same thing as a chest press. Palms are facing backwards, palms together. Backwards, together. Backwards, together. Here we go. Okay, how's that feel? Your shoulder blades are probably going to be the first thing that start to tire. And your shoulders, your rear deltoid muscles. I'm just breathing however it feels natural. Okay, there we go. Already 60% of the way through the workout. How awesome is that? Okay, planks. So, for those of you who can, on your toes and make sure your body is nice and straight. You're pulling down, you're trying to not let your back sag, okay? I can see myself from the camera, back sagging a bit. There we go, see how I fix that? Okay, now it's a little straighter, okay? This might be too hard for some of you, not a problem. Plank on your knees, easy enough. Or, like I said, plank on the side of a couch or against the wall. Okay, and the further down I go, the harder this is, the harder it's going to be. I want to focus on not having my body angled like that, right? That's why I like mirrors, so I can see a straight body or higher up like this. Ten seconds to go in this set, folks. One more exercise, and then we are into rest and recovery for two minutes. There we go. Okay, now... The final exercise, I don't believe I demonstrated it for you, but I'm going to show it to you now. It's called, oh no, I did, it's a bird dog, yes, my brain, okay. So let's get right into the bird dogs, and remember, for those of you who can, do it, making sure that you're not shifting side to side. See, I'm cranking my toe back, I'm not just loosey-goosey, I'm really intentional, holding a tight fist as I do this. Toes crank back, nice tight fist. Toes crank back, nice tight fist. If you can, try and raise both at the same time if you have that kind of stability, okay? If you're having trouble 
Shifting from side to side, do the arm, the arm, leg, leg, and pay attention to not shifting, okay? While you're doing it, whether you're doing both at the same time or one at a time, make sure you're not moving from side to side. Great exercise for all around core stability. One thing I didn't say is try and have a flat back. Don't really try and arch yourself so that your back's swooping. Have a nice straight back, like a table, okay? All right, there we go. First set done. Let's set this thing for two minutes. And we're into rest and recovery, like I said. Okay, how are you feeling? Which exercises did you choose to do? And ask yourself if you chose um, exercises that were on the easier end of the spectrum, and there's no pressure involved in this, so don't feel pressure, but ask yourself, could I do one of the options that's a little bit harder, okay? Just one, just a little bit harder. Ask yourself that, and if you can, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. We will get you there, okay? And also remember, you know, if you find eventually that these weeks are progressing too quickly for you, that you're not, um, that you're not able to progress at the rate that I'm programming for, then you can always redo weeks, right? And keep redoing until you feel that you've hit the level that allows you to move on to the next week. You are competing against yourself. And I was big on this when I first started this, and I kept saying you're competing against yourself, nobody else, okay? So remember that. Take care of you, work at your level. Don't worry that other people are putting in the comments that they're doing this, these routines three times a week and they're doing all the hardest exercises. Great, you know? I mean, I've been doing exercise and training now for over 15 years, but when I started, I was 95 pounds overweight. I can tell you to a certainty that I could not have done anywhere near back then what I can do today. Okay, and that's strange because I was 15 years younger. I'm 54 now, I was 39 then. It's been like 38, 37 actually. It's been more like 17 years, wow, since I lost my weight. Just realizing. Anyhow, I've gotten stronger, more stable, and had more endurance as I've gotten older. Just because it, ta it takes time, right? But you'll get there, don't worry about it, okay? We have got five seconds to go, and then we are back into this thing, okay? So you're getting ready, choose your exercise. Remember, if you do one that's a little bit harder, try it, okay? So squat, twist, squat, twist, squat, twist, squat, twist. Don't do full squats if you can, not a problem. Just half squats, easy enough, right? Maybe you can't twist, maybe you can just lift the leg. Maybe, maybe that's all, that's different from last week, right? Little squat, lift the leg, little squat, Lift the leg. Maybe your knees bother you. Not a problem. Keep your legs straight on the hip flexion part. Or you can do the, uh, hip, the hip thruster where your back's on the couch. And you're thrusting your hips up. Donkey kicks. All right, good old donkey kicks with your knee bent or straight. Depending on what you need. Not a problem. And flexion, abduction, extension, or circles. Okay? Nice, big, wide circles, and again, try and have your hand just really loose on the wall, okay? And you're going to want to do both sides if you're doing that, 30 seconds each side. Okay, here we go. We're into the next one. We are into the chest press skull crusher. Here we go. Grab your weights, water bottles, whatever you got, and press. Skull crusher. Sorry, I did that one wrong. Press. Skull crusher. It's one right into the other from the top position. Palms facing together, palms facing away. Together, facing my feet. Together, facing my feet, okay? Nice, good range of motion. Again, remember, try and do this on a bench, on a wall, on an ottoman, so you can get your elbows down even a bit lower, okay? Where do you feel this when you do it? You feel it in your chest, you feel it in your shoulders, you feel it in your triceps. In this movement, the chest, the pecs are the biggest muscle. You probably won't feel it mostly in them at first. You'll feel it in the smaller muscles like the triceps and for sure the shoulders. That's all a good thing. It means you're getting a workout. Okay, well, there we go. There's one minute. Okay. Into the next one. 
You can do it sitting, you can do it standing. I'm going to use the TRX for you people, but you can do it bending over with the weights where you're rowing, and then you fly. Okay? Row, fly. For those of you with the bands, you can do this sitting down too if it bothers your back. Row, fly, row, fly. No bands, no suspension trainer, not a problem. Row, fly, row, fly, row, fly, row, fly. Some of you might have tendonitis with the flies hard. That's okay, just row, not a problem. Right? Or if it bothers you bending over like that, just imagine you have a band if you don't have a band. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Squeeze. 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 You do this sitting down as well, okay? All right, we're just about there into the next exercise, which of course is the dreaded plank. All right. For those of you brave ones, <clears throat> you want to try the plank. Good for you. And by brave, I don't mean that you have to do the one on your toes like this. No, it's hard no matter what. On your knees, right? Up against a chair, even against a chair on your knees, or on the wall, okay? Just hold that position. Make sure your back is nice and straight and your lower back is not sagging, okay? Just hold that, we got another 20 seconds to go. Okay. You don't have to have your head cranked back like this, your spine's in a nice neutral position. Okay, think about this folks, we've got one more exercise, and that's got us 67% through this routine. We're almost there, okay? Remember, you can do, there it is. Okay, into the bird dogs. You can do up to three workouts a week doing these full body workouts, okay? We're only going to take a maximum of 19 minutes. When you think about the way I've programmed these, we're exercising for maximum a minute for five exercises, then we're resting for two minutes twice between sets. That's a total of 19 minutes, okay? Not even a 20 minute workout. Pretty good deal. You do that two times a week, you're golden. Three times a week, bonus. So I'm providing two workouts every week that are different. And if you want to do one of those two on a third day, feel free. Ideally, make sure you have a day in between your workouts. So the reason why I put these up on Sunday is so that you can do them on Monday. And I put the second one up on Tuesday so that you can do it on Wednesday if you want. And then take one of those two and do it again on Friday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, with the day off in between. If you're really ambitious, maybe just go for a walk. Okay, there we go. We're resting and recovering for two minutes. And we're back in, okay? So ask yourself, how do you feel? Do you feel like anything's improving? It may feel like things aren't improving because notice, and as I said at the beginning, I keep adding exercises on you and I keep making the, the, the exercise, especially the big ones for the lower body, a little more complicated each time. I'm trying to challenge you more and more, okay? How you progress is you continually challenge your body. You continue to throw the same stimulus at your body, same amount of weight, same amount of reps, same length of time, same exercises, it's not going to change, okay? So I have a lot of people who come to me after 10 years and they've gone, I don't feel like I'm doing any better. You know, I'm not improving. And I'm like, well, let's think about that, okay? Where were you when we started? And where are you now? So when they started, for example, I'm thinking of one person in particular, um, they couldn't even go 1.6 miles per hour on the treadmill for 20 minutes. Now they do regular high intensity interval training for 20 to 40 minutes on a bike and do three high intensity, not quite high intensity, but, but, but hard circuit resistance training workouts with real weight, doing seven exercises in minute long uh, rounds with a short rest of one and a half minutes between each other four times, okay? So it may feel like they haven't progressed at all. They progressed a ton. It doesn't feel like it because the exercises, the workouts I'm giving them now are still just as exhausting as walking for 20 minutes on the treadmill at 1.6 miles an hour was, okay? But they progressed a ton. So just be aware of that. 
Be gentle on yourself because you are progressing. If you continue to do the exercises I'm showing you in this progression, you will progress. It may not feel like it, but you are, okay? All right, here we go, folks. We're back in, last set. And let's go. Squat, twist, squat, twist, squat, twist, squat, twist. Or just twist, right? Just like last week, not a problem, okay? You don't have to do full squats. Remember, you're pacing against yourself or just squat. <laughs> Leg raises, okay? At least we're getting the hip flexion in with the squat as well, no problem. We're just regular squats, why not? Okay, just do what you're capable of. Remember, proper squat form, keep that back straight, bend the knees and hips at the same time, and straighten them at the same time, okay? Breathe in, out. Almost there, I think. 15 more seconds, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the squat twist with the hip flexion. there there we go okay good all right and skull crusher chest press combo here we go make this one a little bit harder lift your butt and keep it lifted for the full minute squeeze those butt cheeks together as you're doing this okay palms facing my feet and together feet together. When I'm doing the skull crusher portion here, don't move the elbows, okay? They should stay in place. It shouldn't move my whole arm going back and forward, okay? It's just rotating around the elbows. Okay, every few seconds, ask yourself if you're doing the isometric or continual hip thruster, am I squeezing really as hard as I can? Is my pelvis up as high as it can be? Okay, this will really get this exercise a kick for you, okay? Your butt's gonna start screaming at you about halfway through. Okay, there we go. Now, we're into the row. Okay, now for some of you, you know, you might not be able to lift weight on this one, not a problem. Just imagine you're pulling a band that's in the door. Okay, so I'm imagining that I'm doing this and fly. Fly. Just imagine it, right? Row, fly. Row, fly. Row, fly. Okay, do the same thing with the TRX, the suspension trainer. Or, if I can, grab my weights. Bend over, nice straight back. Row, fly. Row, squeeze those shoulder blades on each one of these. Row, fly. Don't sag, okay? Don't slouch. Nice straight body. Sorry, lost my count there. Rope, fly. Rope, fly. Rope, fly. Rope, fly. Maybe halfway through. It's too hard. You want to drop the weights? Keep going. Not a problem. Okay, but there's our time. We are now into the lovely plank. Plank. Okay, on your toes. Or on your knees, or up against the wall, or on the side of a couch, whatever you want. I'm gonna try and do it on my toes. Uh, I don't do a lot of core training, personally. Um, I have pretty strong abdominals normally, but can't hurt to do it once in a while. Note that uh, doing planks, excellent exercise for squat strength. It's also a great exercise for most of us who um, you know, we work at desk jobs, we don't move around a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm training my core isometrically, I'm training stability, I'm training my body to hold my core in place. So when you think about it, when you're sitting at a chair, at a desk, at a boardroom, working on a computer or in a meeting, doing this, you're training yourself to be stable. There we go, one minute, okay. Let's go to the bird dogs, okay? Remember, if that's too hard, leg first, 
arm, hold it for a second. Slowly, slowly, leg first, arm, hold it for a second. That's too much, so you wanna make sure you're not shifting side to side. Let's go arm, arm, leg, leg, arm, arm, leg, leg. Okay, back to the actual bird dog. How you feeling? Last exercise of all three sets. Yay! 19 minutes of continuing exercise. Look at you go. Just three weeks in, I'll guarantee you, if you've been doing this and you're checking in with yourself, you're feeling better, feeling a little more confident, feeling a little stronger, feeling a little more balanced. And there it is. Good work, folks. Okay. So, watch Tuesday. I'm going to put uh, workout number two for week number three out. Okay, there's going to be some new exercise, new exciting exercises in that as well. As usual, put your comments, your questions, everything down below. And we will see you online.